Hello everyone, welcome back to Ed's Metalworks YouTube channel. Uh, in case you haven't noticed by now, anybody that watches on a regular basis, it's it's a little bit of everything works around here. It's not just metal, it's could be lawnmowers, could be whatever. We got one of them whatever jobs today, a little shop improvement. But uh, I'll show you what we got going here. Walk over here to the office area. What we got here is uh, this tile work by this door. Um, there's a two by eight or two by something that goes across here. And when I laid this tile, I just laid the tile over the top of that, span that gap between the concrete and that. Well, as you can see that we got a pretty good sized crack in the tile across there and it's chipping apart. and. Anyway, it's not good. It, it catches on my um, bottom door sill now and then too. So what we're going to try to do is build us a stainless steel sill plate for that. We'll go, we'll go from the bottom of the door here out past this crack. Um, I dug out. I'm going back over here to the workbench welding table and dug a piece of stainless out of my vast storage of scrap metal that I got I don't know where I come up with all this stuff but anyway uh, this piece of stainless is eight inches by what do we got 55 i don't know if this is a door kick plate or whatever but it's got all these holes punched in it and it's about a shoot it's about a 12 gauge or i don't think it's quite 10 gauge i think it's a 12 gauge piece let me get my little gauge tool over here see if we can see what it is just for curiosity Got this handy dandy little gauge tool. Yeah, let's we'll see if we can get it on here. What's it saying? Yeah, it's, it goes right about to the 12 gauge. You can see the 12 gauge right at the tip of my thumb there. So it's 12 gauge. We I mean, got that settled, but these handy landy, handy dandy little um, sheet metal gauge things are pretty handy now and then. Especially when you got small equipment like mine. Sometimes I always check to see if I could shear it. This I will not be able to shear, of course, because my capacity on my stomp shear and my brake is 16 gauge, but anyway so here's our here's our measurements for what we got to want to build um that seven inch measurement keeps me just inside them holes which will be good these holes i can attach into the wood base in there and then this will sit, just sit on top of the concrete i may have to of course, it's a little bit wide. I, I, may, I, may, I should be able to get that in my brake. I, I may have to break it right here at this point. Um, it's way over capacity for my brake, but let's see if it'll fit in there. But all I need is a little, little bit of a bend to make that transition. Yeah, this is four foot, so I should be able to get it in there. Like I said, it's way over capacity for my, uh, yeah, 16 gauge mild steel. They say you drop two gauges for stainless, so at least. But anyway, we're, we're way above that. But all we maybe have to do is get a little bit of a bend in here and 
We'll try it. If that don't work, we'll figure something else out so that it lays flat on top of the concrete in that transition. But anyway, we'll get this piece cleaned up here and I'll get it laid out and we'll bring you back here. Okay, we uh, cleaned the surface off a little bit with some 409 and then some acetone. But uh, I flipped it over and I see these holes are countersunk on this side, so we're going to call this the upside. And uh, we'll make, we'll take advantage of these pre countersunk holes here. But anyway, I got this abrasive brush and I'm sorry, but I do not know where I came up with it, but there's the information on it, Braid X brush. Here's the bag, Braid X abrasive brush. Anyway, I've, I've only used this on like stainless sheet metal just to, to uh, um, you know, remove some of the scratches, kind of polish it up a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna see how it works on this surface. I don't know, some of this is pretty bad, but it'll be good enough. Um, it's just a, like a abrasive impregnated brush. Um, like I say, here's all the information on it. Anyway, I'll set you up over here and we'll do a little polish and see if it comes, see how it comes out. See if it makes a difference or not. Like I said, I've only used this brush on stainless steel, so we'll see what happens. pretty good job of polishing that up a little bit sorry for the reflection probably but there's a few nicks and scratches in it but overall that'll be good enough for that floor I think shine it up a little bit like I said I don't remember where I got this but had it forever yeah. braid X brush
Okay, I don't know if they're even in business anymore to tell you the truth, but all right, let's get that. We'll get this laid out and we're gonna have to cut it with the plasma cutter and polish them edges again. So here we go. All right, we got it all laid out. I hope that shows up a little bit. These X's will be cut out. This will be cut off here. Cut off here, cut the length there, according to our drawing. So, I get the plasma set up and a guide here somewhere. And I think what we'll do is we'll drill a small hole in the corner of this cut here. So I got somewhere to stop. Same way with this one down here. Yeah, center punch and we'll mark that out a little bit. Go ahead and make that a quarter inch hole. I got a quarter inch uh, transfer punch. We'll go ahead and kind of line that up here in the corner and give it a little tippy tap. a good good mark in there all right maybe we'll go down here and set up to drill those Before we get the plasma set up and go down here to the drill presses yeah, I'll set you up over here somewhere that stainless once you start don't stop <laughs> it kind of hardens if you don't if you let it rub there a little bit a little more this is just a tapmatic tapmatic wax grading compound cutting compound <laughs> Ok, 
Okay. Got us a couple holes. Let's go back down here to the bench. Get set up to do a little plasma cutting. Sun's shining through the window bright today. All right, let me get set up to do some cutting here and we'll get her done. All right, we got us a straight edge to follow here. We're gonna whack this off to width um, with my plasma cutter. My plasma cutter is a Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme. Uh, this is good for 5 8 inch thick metal. I've cut half inch with great, with great success, so never 5 8 but it's a good little plasma cutter. Probably not, at the time, not one of the cheapest ones, but it's been a very good machine for me. Anyway, we got the air turned on, looks like about 90 PSI. Got it ground on the table, we're going to do some cutting. Practice run here. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, just like butter, nice cut. Now let's get set up to do this long cut. I just kind of use the tip as a guide here. I'm going to be on the outside of my red line here. And we'll set up a let's set up a square. Get this depth. down here get this set oh, see that get this set down here on the other end let's check our dimension across here Looks good that way. Looks good that way. Just clean the tip off a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Let's blast away. Huh? Practice run. All right. 
right, here we go. Quite fast through it, it went too fast on there, but it's a good cut. It'll work. All right, now let's cut out these corners. Pop that up to the next setting on my dial here. Give me a little more power. Blast this corner out of here. I can kind of see why I drilled that hole in the corner. Gives me a place to end my plasma cut at and start the next one so we're in the next one go on the inside here Get this other end.
got a little wiggle room in these because it'll we'll probably undercut that trim a little bit to slide this in there but get her as close as we can We got our piece cut. Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it cleaned up and polished up a little more, and then we'll bring you back to see how it fits. Well, here we go. We got the got the old uh, tile, broken tile, out of there. I didn't remember, but there was a piece of flashing underneath here. It was all rusted, but anyway, I broke broke this piece of tile, taking everything out. Luckily, I had another piece of that stuff. I cut it to fit back in there. It's just a peel and stick kind of tile, nothing too fancy. But anyway, we're gonna raise the the back or the door side of this by oh I don't know, it's about five sixteenths. But uh, you can see here, this is the pink insulation that, and the expansion that goes all the way around my concrete floor. And then here's the sill board that the door fits on. It looks good. So I got the, I got the new sill here. I'll set it down in here. If I can, one-handed anyway. I can't do it one handed, so hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. Alright. There we go. Get me some screws in there. Hold that down. That'll be a lot better than that cracked tile. Open that up there a little bit so you can see to the outside. Yeah, a little bit of caulking and screwing it down. That's all that's left. I don't know if you guys need to see that, but I don't know. I'll get it I'll get it all set in and and uh, call it done. Anyway Thanks for joining me on this little project. Like I said before, never know what's going on in Ed's Metalworks here. It's a different job, different day. Always exciting. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you will, and we'll catch you all on the next one. Ed's Metalworks out.